Hello, everyone. Uh, good day to all of you. Uh, I think let's start with a bit of quiz, you know, just for me to get to know more about you. All right. Um, I'm just going to start a poll here so you can grab your phone, log into slido.com, um, make use of like this ID. Um, and, you know, just tell me a bit about you, right? Because uh, I do want to, you know, design this um, workshop so that um, you get what you want, right? And um, also one thing is that um, all of you um, are actually like on a live uh, workshop and um, this workshop is an experiential one. Um, we are going to expect um, some kind of like participants, participations from everyone here. Um, and, you know, feel free to just speak up anytime. Um, if you have questions or just type it into the chat. Uh, and the next thing is that this, um, this entire session will also be recorded. And if you are not comfortable, you know, being um, recorded, you know, you could change your name, change your profile pic and, uh, you know, not uh, speak up. But of course, um, if you are comfortable with that, feel free to speak up anytime. All right. So I'm seeing about seven participants here. Uh, we're just going to wait a bit. Uh, in the, uh, at the same time, we'll just wait for um, some of the poll results to come in, you know, just to really know like um, what uh, you guys are expecting out of this and the profile of um, all of you as well. So over here, you can select uh, multiple different type of uh, different different uh, statement that describes you. All right, and yeah, that will give me an idea of like um, who are you. All right, I'm just gonna give it a couple of minutes. Um, you know, in case there are some stragglers uh, who has not joined the workshop. All right, uh, maybe you'll wait till about 10, 10.05, 10 10.06, 10 10.07, and then we'll get started. Can I actually see the result? Show result. Right. Uh, I think I'm just going to leave this here for a while and then um, get started. So what I see here is most of you have not participated in a contracted voting uh, session before. So this is going to be your first time uh, and you have no idea how to even conduct a contracted voting. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, you have no idea where you can use it. Okay, sure. Let's um, talk about it towards the end. Right, uh, I'm just going to leave this here. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, welcome, and uh, my name is Raymond, and I'm a software engineer at GovTech Singapore. So a bit about me, I have built this product called an OpenSit. Um, basically, it's an open source uh, digital credentials framework where anyone in the world um, or any education institutions in the world can make use of it to issue uh, digital credentials. And, you know, in my free time, I love, you know, building random tools. And in fact, today we are just uh, also seeing like one of the products that I built um, for quadratic voting in which you can use as well. All right. Um, I got to know about um, 
the whole idea of you know, the radical market and the radical exchange foundation to Audrey uh, last year to um, one of the share encounter with her at um, DEF CON conference where she spoke at, um, had, a lot, had a breakfast with her and you know, really got bought into the idea. And since then I've been looking and reading up on this concept, right? Um, definitely not a researcher in this area. Uh, neither have like any economics experience in this area. Um, but I come in from a technologist point of view, right? So uh, today, like I say, um, it's an experiential workshop. Um, it's about you, right? Um, your participation matters and your participation will guide how your experience of this workshop will look like. We'll start off with a game, right? Uh, right away on the dot. And then after that, we'll talk about the different experience of feelings. And um, before we move into, you know, how can you also use quadratic working or how you can even conduct one, right? So let's start with a game, right? We are seeing about 10 people right now. So I'm going to throw all of you into a scenario. So the scenario is this, you have ch chatted and yacht with three friends, you know, uh, on a holiday trip across the Atlantic Ocean, and none of you had any previous sailing experience, but you have got a skipper and two person crew. However, you know, uh, in mid Atlantic, right, a uh, fire broke out and basically most of the yacht is destroyed and the yacht is sinking, right? You have no idea of your current location because navigation and radio equipment has been damaged, right? Your best estimate is that you're hundreds of miles from the nearest landfall. You and your friends have managed to save 15 items, right? Undamaged and intact after the fire. And in addition to the 15 items, you have got a four-man rubber craft and a box of match, right? So you are with three friends, so four of you, and you got a four-man rubber craft, um, life craft, and also a box of match, together with 15 different items. Your task, right, in a game, right, is actually to rank these 15 items in terms of their importance to you as you wait to be rescued, right? Uh, number one, right, you give the item number one, rank one, if you think it is the most important item, right? Number two, for the second most important item until you have 15, which is the least important item, all right? So all of you, uh, we will start off with an individual exercise, right? Uh, visit this link, right? Or you can scan the QR code. Um, I'm just going to show you at the side. Right, you'll reach this uh, Google Sheet, right? Um, if you are not on a laptop, you could grab a piece of paper and pen, right? It works as well, no worries, right? So if you, the moment you get on here, what you can do is you can make a copy, right? Make a copy for yourself. And um, over here, you can start ranking this item at the side, right? So you have your individual ranking. So let's say I think this is one, uh, I think this is two, I think this is the most important, so and so forth, until you have filled the entire uh, individual ranking from one to 15, right? If you have no idea um, what a certain item is, do not Google, right? Because you don't get Google in the middle of the ocean. If you have no idea what's a sextant, um, make a guess. Maybe it's the least important. Maybe it's somewhere in the middle, right? Make a guess. Right, hey, so I'm gonna stay on the screen for a while, yep. They asked if, um, someone asked if you could put the URL in the chat. Uh, yes, definitely. How do I get to the chat? Hmm. Down at the bottom, you can just hit the chat. In the... I'm on the Q&A, I don't see a chat though. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, down at the bottom when the, um, there's different options and one of them is chat. You switch hmm. from the Q&A to the chat. One second. Uh, could Tyler, could you help me please? Because uh, that is not a pretty long URL and I couldn't see the chat. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, where do I get the URL? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I see it now. So, HTTPS. There you go. It's Lee. QV game sheet, right? Oh, there you go. Got it. Got it? 
Okay. So just going to stay here for a couple of minutes, and um, you know, this is this is important because um, this is really like how you form your own opinion, right? So take all the time that you need, right, and fill in this thing. If you do need the scenario again, like this is the scenario. Also, um, like this entire slide can be found at this URL. I'm just going to type it there as well. So in case like you would like to have this slide at the end, uh, you can actually get from here, C-E-R-I-E-N-C, right? So the slash QV experience. So um, in case like I'm on the different slides uh, from you, Right, feel free to navigate on your screen like to the correct slides, okay? All right, I'm um, seeing a few more participants uh, joining right now. So just to give a bit of context, we are playing a game right now with everyone. Um, it's a scenario-based game. Right. Um, all of us are going to rank 15 items in order of importance from, um, from a list of 15 different items and basically um, see how does those you know, help us if we are stranded in the middle of Atlantic Ocean. Right. There is a link uh, on the, this slide over here that says uh, QV Game Sheet. Just uh, click on this or it's also in the chat. Click on it and you'll see uh, Excel, um, you'll see a Google Sheet, make a copy out of it, click on file, make a copy, right? And fill out the individual ranking, right? So if I think this is the first most important, second most important, third most important, I rank it like that, right? You'll see the number one to 15. Right, so um, anyone- Raymond? Yep. Raymond, how, how are we, each one are gonna put our values in the, in the Excel spreadsheet? Sorry? How I, are each of us are gonna put the, our values in the, in the spreadsheet? Uh, yeah, so don't worry about uh, the other stuff. Uh, you only need to make a copy and just make sure that uh, you have your individual ranking. So your individual ranking is not going to be uh, the same as other people's. And this is like your own um, score sheet. So you don't have to interact with other participants yet. Got it. Yeah, okay, great. Because uh, later we will go into a group exercise. Um, usually how I conduct this session is that uh, we get into, we go into small groups of three to four people. But I understand that, you know, in Zoom, it's, you know, likely impossible. So we have a uh, different, we, we dive straight into the projective voting right after everyone has formed their own uh, opinion on what is important. So this period of time is really for you to brainstorm through, you know, the relative ranking of um, all these 15 items for yourself. Right. Um, so I think we have gone um, a couple of minutes. Um, if anyone is still on this exercise, please raise up your hand. Um, if not, I will continue to the next slide. All right, none. All right, perfect. So the next slide, before you continue, right, let me talk a bit about projective voting. This is a projective voting exercise. The moment you click on this URL, you get into a voting sheet. Don't hit on submit immediately because, well, then you can't submit again. So what you can do is that on the top left hand side, so I'm going to show you how this uh, website will look like. Um, on, you, you can do it on mobile, right? Uh, on mobile, you'll look something like this. You'll see a credit, uh, a budget, cre a credit budget of 99 credit at the top, right? And 15 different items. For each item, you can add Right, you can put positive vote, you can put negative vote, 
And naturally, you can vote um, multiple times on a single topic, or you can don't vote at all on a single uh, item. When your budget runs out, you are out of credit, right? So take, for instance, at the seven one, you'll see like insufficient budget. That means to say I can't put my eight vote on this, but I can continue on other votes, right? So long as you, you know, out of budget, you can just, uh, yeah, you can just skip. All right, so uh, you don't have to use until you have zero budget. It's fine if you leave it like that. You know, one or two uh, spare credits is fine. And after that, you know, just hit on submit. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to leave it um, here for you. So over here, what you're doing is that you're doing a vote, you know, on what is important for you. Okay. If you have any questions, just feel free to unmute yourself and speak up. All right. I'm just going to leave it here. So for the new joiners, right, uh, there are a few new uh, attendees. Over here at the bottom, you'll see this URL, uh, bit.ly slash 2 experience. That will give you the slides, all right? And if on slide six, you'll see this um, scenario, right? The scenario will say that you're lost in Atlantic Ocean and you have 15 items to rank uh, in terms of most important um, item first, right? So more important items, you give them higher rank now. So we are right now in the group exercise. Take a couple of minutes, you know, just to um, fill this in um, and we'll wait for everyone and then we'll move on. I'm just going to wait a while for more votes to come in. I think right now we are only seeing like uh, two users, right? <clears throat> so the moment you have uh, submitted vote, you will be able to see like um, the results of like everyone who has voted as well. I'm seeing about five uh, voters in. All right. Uh, so just a shout out for the new joiners. Uh, we are currently in a voting exercise, right? Using quadratic voting. This is the URL, right? But to understand the context of this game, right? Uh, you have to read uh, slide number six. So how do you get to slide number six? Um, the URL for the set of slides is actually at the bottom right, okay? you'll see the scenario where you're lost in the sea uh, in Atlantic Ocean with a few friends. And um, your task now is really to rank 15 different items by order of importance, right? And using the quadratic voting tool, um, you know, the one with the highest uh, vote will then be more important for you, right? And that's how you go about doing that. Right, seeing about eight people right now. So I'm just going to wait to roughly about 10 people and then we'll move on to talk about the experience of uh, voting um, before we actually talk about the result. 
So those people who are who have yet to finish voting, you can still take the next few slides to um, vote for your you know most important items. Seeing about nine results now, just gonna wait for like one more and then we'll move on. All right, so it's at 10 people right now. Uh, if you guys are wondering like how, how I'm doing that, uh, I'm really just refreshing it on my mobile um, to see like number of voters is 10, right? Uh, if you refresh the results um, that you are in, you will be able to see like how many voters are there as well. Okay, let's uh, have a, you know, open conversation about um, your experience. Right, so um, you know, was QV hard for you? You know, yeah, it was it was a bit tricky. I was I was definitely I was definitely feeling the burn a bit on things that I really wanted. I wish I could have kept on dumping more points into it, but I did feel that square root taking action pretty quick. It was cool. That's cool. Do Do you have to think about um? Like the square root, you talked about square root, right? Do you have to think about that? I, I, I did, but I don't think somebody would have to. I think this would be fine if you weren't. I'm pretty mathy, so that's where my mind is normally, but I don't think that this would be an issue if you weren't. Right, I see. So you find it hard because of the trade-off, right? And not because the voting itself was hard, was it? Yeah. Which I, I think is, I think this is a good thing to be difficult. I'm not, yeah, I think it's, it's good that it's hard in this way. Great, thanks. Anyone else? No. Or if you found it to be easy, you know, it goes both ways. Like the question goes both ways. You know, you, you tried it the first time and you found, hey, it was really easy. Tell us about that. Hi, Raymond. This is Nalongo. I'm also based in Singapore, actually. Um, so I did it for the very first time, and I have to say that um, one of the challenges I found was that it kind of forced me to vote for things that I know are not important, given the scenario. Um, so I found that the noise was there, uh, and, and it just, it compelled me to like, I need chocolate. I don't really need chocolate, but because it was on the table, I kind of selected and voted for it. I voted for um, rum. So yeah, it's like the, 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 the challenge of having too much choice. Why, why do you have to vote for chocolate or rum if you didn't like it? Because it was there. It's, it's like it was offered. And so really? I'm like, okay, fine, I'm going to take it. Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't have. I, if, I, if, I, if given the scenario, I, yeah. if I was given choices that were really important, I probably would have only voted for the important things. But I was like, well, if you're giving me chocolate, then maybe I'll get chocolate. So this is the challenge of having too much choice. Really? Does anyone yeah. also face the same like a problem as uh, Molongo, is that how I pronounce the name? Yes, yes, correct. Molongo, right. Uh, anyone also face the same issue as Molongo um, saying that, um, yeah, because it's there, I have to vote for him. Yeah, in my case, um, I was like, I wanna use all the credits I have. So, yeah. you know, like, it doesn't hurt having some extra chocolate bars for one vote, <laughs> um, but, <laughs> I found it very useful because when I was choosing, like if I value two things in the same way, uh, I have to, uh, you know, like make a choice that depends on the scenario. Like, okay, first I'm gonna drink a glass of water and then I'm gonna start looking for this, you know, but if with the, with the quadratic voting, I can actually um, like uh, be set for different uh, scenarios and if different things happen. So I found it very useful, but, but, but yeah, like if you have extra votes, like, well, why not? Oh, okay. Great. Interesting. So um, would some of you like to share with us like your voting pattern? What do you, what do you do the moment like you got onto this, um, onto this platform? Because uh, I have conducted this workshop multiple times. Um, some people tell us that you know I look for my favorite item first, and you know I give it nine votes first, and figure out from there. And then there are some people who say I'm just going to go through the list. You know, everyone one vote for those who are important first. You know, how 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 do you get started? You know, 
Tell us about your voting pattern. Yeah, okay. About myself, I was this this methodology of quadratic voting moved you toward, you know, to to vote to your primary needs. And mm -hmm. when you have some, you know, like additional like tokens or additional like voting power, you're gonna do it to toward you you your your secondary needs as mm. as, as, as the mention as the thing that, that was mentioned about the chocolates because I mean I mean if you first you you're gonna vote for your primary needs that is water and then if you have some remaining votes so you are gonna apply for your secondary needs that mm. in, in the case of the of, of the girl it was chocolate. I um, see. In your yeah. case do you give um, like water a lot of votes first and then you move on to chocolate or you kind of like just give water like maybe two votes and you move on to the next item? Yeah, in my case, I, will, I was like, first I need water and yeah. then I will need, you know, some instrument, some, some, something to, to, to get some fish. Yeah. And I, I don't know, I'm going to eat it. I don't know how, but... Uh, and then uh, look for secondary things if I, I have see. some votes remaining. Yeah. Does anyone have a different voting pattern from him? Yeah, my, my voting pattern was, I, I think like, because I saw budget and then, I, so I knew it was about voting preferences, but I, I, the interface made me feel like, okay, I'm buying things to, to take with me to, on this boat. And then I realized, oh wait, like this is a this is about preferences. So at first I was like making everything one that I okay. needed, and then I, I was like, okay, wait, okay, I have, I have way more budget than I need. So and then I started slowly putting things at two, then right. started slowly putting things at three, and then at four, and then at five, and then I realized like, okay, I'm not sure if this is the best voting pattern. Um, right. And it would have also been good if like. If I put five, I want to know how much of my budget did I actually spend to put All that right. five. I mean, I assume it's like 25, but it would have been okay. good if that were in the um, thing. And it would also have been good if after I vote, I can see the rankings first to make sure like, or like sort it by the rankings so that I know, okay, is this the preference I really want before I submit the vote? Yeah. I see. All right, and on the chat, we also have a submission from Edgar. Uh, in his case, you know, he came back to the sorting list and kind of grouped the top five. Um, so he went back and referenced to his own personal list. Um, so in that case, he, you, he allocated, you know, more budgets to his top five first. And then after that, you're going to his secondary items around uh, and then, you know, giving about two points and the rest one to two credits, All right? Uh, anyone else has a different voting pattern from the rest? All right, if not, let's go on to the next one. All right, what's the largest vote you have given? All right, uh, I'm hearing about five. Anyone top five, you know, has a number greater than five? No one? Okay, so I'm thinking that five is about the largest uh, vote we are seeing. All right, um, next one. This is interesting. Uh, over here, how many or who used negative vote. Sorry, in this context, what is negative vote? All right, what is negative vote is just saying like, uh, you say like, I hate a kind of shark repellent. I don't know why I hate it, but I don't think this should be on the top of the list and I give it a negative vote. Anyone oh, did oh it? got it, got it. I, I didn't do it. You didn't, okay. Anyone did? Anyone gave like at least a minus one? Oh, uh, hi, it's Malongo again. Sorry, I didn't actually even know it was an option. So, yeah, or maybe if you said it was, I, 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 that slipped my mind. So I didn't know that you could because I would have. Would that then have given you more credits for other things? Because no, the so, well, you see, I, I start off with 99, right? If I give one negative vote to Shark Repellent, I'm consuming one credit. Uh, I'm consuming four, consuming nine credits. No, it doesn't give you more credits. 
Oh, and the reason I stayed at five, by the way, is when I tried to do six for water, it, it chewed my budget. Like my budget came down quite significantly. And so I had to start rationally. Yeah. All right. So um, I'm saying no one had any negative vote. All right. Um, and Santo Santiago say that uh, I would give a negative to all um, because he didn't want to pollute the ocean. Yeah, sure. All right. Um, so I assume that over here no one uh, used negative vote but i think i mentioned it uh, earlier on over here where you can actually give a negative vote um perhaps like we missed it it's fine um let's go again right uh and i think this is important you know as a voter you know do you feel that you are heard that your voice mattered anyone Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Why? Tell me about that. I mean, because I, 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 I'm looking at the, and the results and, and basically it's uh, basically what I vote. The okay. first one, the second one precision. Right. Interesting. But, but I, I don't know if I, if I can add something. Mm, what do you mean by add something? Yeah, I, I want to say um, what I see is that basically we are we are like giving our trust in a consciousness about the need of our basic needs but what if, if we are applying this kind of methodology in a in an ecosystem where there is no such thing you know there there is no like that consciousness there is not like that education that for instance uh I, I don't know, like uh, water is needed because some people that that maybe don't have that knowledge that salt water cannot be consumed by humans. So I, 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 can, I can like think, what if this mechanism is implemented in some sort of community that doesn't have the required knowledge to, to, to apply, you know, the, the a voting power, I, towards, you know, the, the, the benefit of the community. So I, I have those doubts. I don't right, know what... So it's interesting. I would like to get back to this because uh, this goes back to the whole idea of democracy, right? We, we will get into that because that is a heavy discussion, but uh, let's see if we have time for that later, right? Uh, great. So now I think it's a good time for us to, you know, kind of get into um you know how did you do uh you know this is collection i think all right so this is this is the result of like the 13 voters right um let's see how did you do so remember that you have the excel spreadsheet uh, i'm just going to download the answer sheet so this is a very common game um for um for for like leadership training so on the Excel sheet, all right, I'd like you to fill in the group ranking over here, right? So 15, one, hey, sorry, no. Uh, you can start by filling in the Coast Guard ranking. I'll do the, I'll do the group ranking for you. So what you need to do is uh, for your individual ranking, you have the ranks already. You know, just fill it in with the Coast Guard ranking on the blue column, right? So it's 15, one, four, three, four, right? 13, nine. Right, um, and then 2, 12, um, 5, 10, 11, 8, 6, 7. Right, so this is um, how it looks like. And I will help you fill in the group ranking as well. So uh, you can reference my spreadsheet over here just to see um, what is more important. Right, um, well, I will fill this last part in for you. Um, sorry. All right, so sorry, let me change a bit of everything. Okay, so you got the Coast Guard ranking here. Okay, you have your individual ranking. You can copy all of this. So if you go back to just now the reference sheet, you will be able to see like this is preview. You can just copy uh, the entire set in. So um, in this case, this is number one. Number two is ocean fishing kit. Number three is army ration. Number four is transistor radio. Number five is shark repellent. 
shock repellent. Where is it? Number five is shock repellent. Six is a map. Seven is eight is a sextant. Nine is a mosquito netting. Ten is fifteen feet of this. Eleven is chocolate bars. Twelve is shaving mirror. Thirteen is all. Fourteen is floating cushion. And fifteen is rum. All right. Okay, so um, this is how all of you do, right? Um, you are at 80 points for the group, right? So um, let's talk about it, right? How did you do? All right, uh, for those of you who would like to share, there's nothing embarrassing or nothing, uh, uh, yeah, embarrassing about uh, your own personal score. It's um, like what like what some of us say, you know, we are not um, experts in navigation or, you know, survival, you know, um, you know, if you like to share your individual ranking, you can type it into the chat, right? Uh, how is your individual score looking like? Okay, uh, because I think right now, let's have a conversation about how you do compared to the group performance, right? Does anyone want to share like your own personal score? And um, yeah, how does that fare? Is the group performance a uh, like uh, according to your expectations. 64, right. So Graham actually performed better than the group. Um, Graham, you want to talk about this? Uh, I, I know a little bit about um, ocean navigation. So I think I got lucky with the scenario. I see. So in this case, um, how was your voting pattern like? Like um, in your first two items, what do you put? Um, I think my first two items was the map and the sextant. I see, right? So you're focusing on the um, navigation. Yeah. Right. Cool. Um, Antonio was minus five, so you are 75, is that? Okay, never mind. So um, some of you have a personal score of 76, uh, individual 78, all right? Um, anyone perform worse than the group? No one? All right, it seems like everyone seems to be doing better than the group. Then why, you know, uh, in a group quadratic voting case that uh, you have done worse? All right, because uh, over here we are talking about the difference in the score and you know having more difference means um, you have done worse. All right? Let's look at the data, right? In this case, usually it is, it is quite interesting. Um, this is in fact the first time ever that I have actually seen that the group performance is actually uh, worse off. And actually it is not, um, it's not impossible, in fact, right? So uh, let's get to insights, right? For some of you, you realize that um, we can go into the insights and we can see um, some of this data. Let's look at it, all right? Over here, um, you can see that in most, um, in most kind of scenario, you will actually see a, uh, a normal distribution of some sort like that. And in this case, a lot of people actually, um, you know, voted three and four for a sextant. And we do know that, you know, a sextant is good for navigation, but is it relevant in this context? Actually, no, <laughs> because you are so lost um, in the ocean. And even if you do, uh, you are able to pinpoint your exact location out in the sea and, you know, which direction to go, you are hundreds of miles away from the locust landfall the nearest landfall, it's impossible for you to go there, right? Um, how about shaving mirrors? All right, so one participant actually gave five points to it. Uh, in fact, this is the single most important thing um, if you're lost, 
Why? Because a uh, shaving mirror actually can project light, um, you know, as far as the horizon goes, right? So if you see a plane, um, you know, in a very um, in the horizon, you can actually use it to signal um, your location, right? So yep, a shaving mirror is actually important, but uh, like what uh, we said just now, most people wouldn't know, right? So in this case, actually, a small minority. In fact, only one person actually knows that a shaving mirror is important and gave it five votes, right? It's fine, right? Over here, you see uh, mosquito netting, right? Uh, naturally, for a container of water, everyone agreed that it was uh, very important. In fact, one person exhausted 81 credit just to make a point, you know? Um, and if we look at the rest, you can see that, you know, there is two person who thinks that hey, actually, we don't really need the map of Atlantic Ocean. Um, let's look at this. This is interesting because over here, this two person um, did a minus two. In total, we spent a credit of two, um, you know, four points times two, about eight points. And basically, this nullifies a lot of votes on this side. So actually, um, the map of Atlantic Ocean in, at the end is actually not too far up, right? Um, the group ranking actually gets to about six, although a lot of people actually vote for this, right? Um, for the rest, uh, small transistor radio, you know, a lot of people think that it is important, right? Yeah, yeah, of course, the container of water is filled. Um, if not, it wouldn't be too useful, right? Okay, so, so this is roughly the distribution, right? Let, let's get back to here. Right. Uh, I'd like to talk about this question right now, right? Because in this case, what if the community is not educated? Um, actually, I, I wouldn't like to talk about this um, in a workshop series, um, but I feel that uh, in this case, uh, it is a good time to talk about it because um, we do see a lot of personal score that is uh, far better or better than the group ranking. Right. Um, so what happens when community is not, ed not educated, we don't mean it by an absolute term, but rather in the space of, you know, survival, right? Because uh, this is a survival scenario. Um, it's not even a navigation scenario. Um, what if the community doesn't know how to survive <laughs> out at sea, right? And that's normal. Most of us doesn't know, right? And this is interesting. Because uh, it goes back to the earliest form of democracy, right? Um, in the earliest form of democracy, who are allowed to vote? Anyone? Who are the people who are allowed to vote in the earliest form of uh, democracy? Only the rich and the old and wise. Yeah, right. Uh, close, right? Um, I think it goes back to uh, roughly the feudal era um, where only landowner, only men are able to vote. And the rationale to that is that um, if you are uh, having a government, right, um, that if you have a government, um, the government is supposed to make, a, make decision on behalf of the entire community and that um, they need to be comprises of the, uh, the smartest people in some sense. And who are the people who can then choose who are the people who are smart and can lead the community? Uh, then they say, okay, only the rich people. In fact, so that, that forms the earliest um, version of uh, democracy um, where only land owners are allowed to vote. So that, that in, in any form of voting, right, uh, you kind of really protect against um, the part where the community is not educated in a certain area, right? However, right, uh, how does quadratic voting fare then? You know, why, why do we even care if, in this case, uh, quadratic voting doesn't really help this few individuals, right, uh, such as Santiago, uh, Edgar, and, you know, uh, Ed, Antonio and Pavel, um, why do we use quadratic voting, All right? And I think it's good that we have this kind of scenario because now 
then we can look at this with an uh, open, uh, very clear lens, right? Number one, right? Obviously, without going into the results as you know, the ultimate form of like, uh, whether it is good or not, uh, we already hear from some of you that um, there's a fuller expression of preference uh, intensity. You know, you can actually say, I freaking love this, you know, <laughs> and the person who voted nine vote for water didn't even, uh, you know, show up uh, when I asked what's your highest vote because, yeah, you know, someone actually did say, like, I really love water, you know, nine votes for water. I really, really love water. Uh, and it's really, really important. Do we allow this person to scream at the top of his or her voice to say that? Yes. You know, we allow for this kind of scenario, right? Also, it encourages moderation, right? In all the votes, you can see almost everyone is around the negative two to two range, right? In very rare cases, you see uh, water, you have like very, very large skew to the right. Other than that, you can see all the concentration of votes are around zero. What does this show? This shows us that in fact, most of us do not have a stance or have, do not have a strong stance when it comes to a certain policy or areas that we don't have an opinion on. So if we compare it to a range vote kind of, um, scenario right over here um this is taken from the radical market book right where we talk about two participants on a range vote like vote right um they are voting so if you look at the gray color bar they are either voting three or zero there's no in between like one or two they are very extremist we call it right but however when we transit these two people to the quadratic voting form you can see that they are very unlike each other, right? While on the Likert scale, they are very much similar because they are either three or zero, right? On the quadratic voting scale, they are very different. Over here, this person, you know, doesn't seem to have a strong focus in certain area, maybe only, um, you know, I, on, the, I, on the topic of terrorism. But on the other hand, if I look at this individual, he cares a lot about minimum wages, he cares a lot about taxation and he cares a lot about women's pay, right? Whereas such distinction does not exist here. Over here, you know, it talks about encouraging moderation in the sense that a lot of people, you know, can choose to abstain from the vote. You know, over here, I choose to abstain on the issue of guns, Obamacare, abortion and, you know, deportations. And that's fine, you know. Uh, we want to make people perform trade-offs. You know, I want to trade off my opinion on, you know, plastic sheeting just so that I could vote more on transistor radio. All right. And also, this is something that we didn't touch on much. But in fact, uh, there is a negative vote to sync candidates. Um, in the book, uh, Radical Market, we, uh, the author actually also examined, right, um, if we were to allow negative vote um, in, you know, voting, you know, uh, we can actually sync candidates that are largely unpopular, right? And this is important, right, for people to just uh, pull certain candidates down, right, without, um, you know, expending too much credit. So that in this case, the equivalent will be like if a single person votes negative one and there is a person who votes plus nine, right? What will happen is that this person essentially has wasted uh, the difference of uh, you know, nine square and eight square um, credits of someone else. And it really, uh, in a way, because of that, it encourages moderation. So let's go back to your results over here. In fact, over here, um, in the group, um, in the group results, this is a very good reflection of what the entire group thinks, right? While the entire group does not, um, you know, have a certain 
uh, does not know what is the result. This is what you guys think. And let's point you to something interesting. How many of you, when voting over here, you are thinking about navigating out of your, of your situation, right? Most of you. How many of you were thinking about, you know, staying alive until someone comes here and fetch you? Does anyone um, in this group uh, actually thought of that pattern? You know, just staying alive and trying to uh, make communication and wait until someone else gets you. Anyone? Right, this one, Antonio. Yeah, right. I was waiting. I was waiting to survive mm -hmm. and until I get rescued. Mm, right. So in fact, uh, I think more of you were thinking of navigating out in, and that for that reason, you know, the voting results seems to be um, going in that direction where you're trying to navigate out. Uh, I see a lot of votes in the navigation. Right. So what quadratic voting does not address is this problem where this thing. What if the community is not educated, right? However, in an alternative scenario, right, what would have happened is that if, for instance, you have one or two so-called industry experts in this area, what would have happened is that this one or two industry experts would have found this as a game and say that, actually, I would rather not spend on water because I think the majority of people are going to vote for it already. And instead, I would spend a bit more on a shaving mirror and vote maybe six to eight to nine votes on shaving mirror, knowing that a lot of people are not going to know about this. And this is fine because a lot of people are not going to give a negative vote to shaving mirror because uh, they don't know what to do with it. All right? So with that, I think uh, the purpose of this workshop is also to really um, get all this question out, right? And I'd like to just uh, bring you to you know, um, the next part of it, you know, how do you create a quadratic voting? So if this interests you, right, let's look at this. Right, this is an open source tool that I've used to create this vote. Uh, I'm the author of this and I host it, right? Um, basically, I have a lot of people using this for uh, just to get their own uh, voting for themselves. So let's say we are doing the loss at sea game. Right, and you can kind of like enter all the 15 candidates or you can use a Excel file to just populate all 15. This is in fact how I created the vote. Um, you can customize the voter budget. We say it's 99. Um, for this particular case, we are using a public election, but we can change it to a private election and only, um, and only invited voters are allowed to vote. So uh, the other options is that I can actually create an end-to-end -end encrypted voting um, so that um, the, the results, uh, the votes are not exposed to the platform owner, which is me, right? And you can actually email all these voters. So I can say like Raymond, and then I type his email at gmail.com and he receive an invitation to vote. So this is actually a very easy way for people to you know, get started uh, with uh, quadratic voting if you so wish to. So in fact, um, let's try it. So. Tada, create vote. Okay, and this is actually the voting link, right? This is how you can get started. Uh, for all of you who, you know, want, uh, for the techies who will prefer to, you know, look at the source code and look, uh, run your own copy, you can actually reference this to repository. Okay, so the next thing, uh, I think we are running out of time. Um, so I'm just going to skip this and just tell you about um, one scenario that we use quadratic voting, which is at the start, I think um, some of you mentioned, you know, where can I use that? Okay. So in this case, um, my company, uh, we are a government agency. Um, we have this exercise of promotion nomination, right? Um, where hundreds of us actually vote for our participants, uh, our peers to see if they are, to see if, to, to try to get them to be promoted at the organizational level. So it's, uh, it's democratic in that sense where um, your peers actually choose, you know, uh, who to be promoted. So all of us will actually use this 
and then we'll list our peers names. So you see Raymond here, Raymond's colleague A here, Raymond's colleague B here, and we'll go about doing this to vote our peers up. And of course, we also can use negative vote to signal that this, um, this candidate is not ready for promotion yet. All right, that's one way. Um, another one that we are using it for is also for simple things like um, for um, team bonding events. You know, team members can actually use this to uh, vote for what kind of activities that you like to do, All right? Uh, on my voting platform, for those um, that are unencrypted, right? Um, because a lot of people use my voting platform um, for different things. I'm also seeing um, this thing being used for brainstorming events, right? When a lot of ideas are thrown out. So take for instance, I see this new project are being con um, having a commencement, and people were choosing like what kind of motto or you know mission statement to put as their company's uh, mission statement, and there were actually votes on like mission statements. So that's also one way that you can uh, use it, right? As well as company goal, you know, you go for a company retreat and you identify like this is the uh, ten things that um, you know you have got from your senior management, and out of these ten things, what is going to be the most important in the next upcoming quarter, right? You can actually use this mechanism as well um, to reach a consensus, right? Um, and I think this is a good time for us to put an uh, end note to this. And also I'm um, taking question and answer, right? If you have any question and answer, feel free to just do a shout out now. Yeah, Raymond, I have, I have basically two questions. The okay. first will be when uh, uh, the, the, only, um, the only idea that I have when people are gonna use negative votes, it's when people have a strong assumption about a, 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 you know, an adoption of an idea by the community. I mean, if I really believe that people are gonna vote for option A, and I really believe that option A is wrong, I'm gonna put all my votes or I'm gonna use my negative votes against that. I, I, I only see, see at this moment this option and the second one will be my second question will be how this quadratic vote could be approached into a survey for you know into into us to a community let's say a country about you know what are the people who 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 are who really uh, you know to ask people which are the candidates that approach to this ideal candidate for approximate elections so in that way you know you will have several questions so the ideal path using quadratic votes will be putting on the population um, tokens or, or voting power on each question for that all for for that complete survey or no that will be my two questions right i'm actually not understanding the second one um could you try to make that a bit more succinct yeah the second one is um uh, about you know let's say that you want to ask to a country and at a country level yeah. what are the candidates that people like the most so oh, exactly. there are going to be several questions yeah. so what, what what is the best approach to use quadratic votes yeah. or you know you know uh points for every questions or no or, or is it a different approach right Okay, so uh, let me address your first one. You know, when do we use negative votes? In fact, it's not too different from a uh, normal election, right? Because in a normal election, we have actually three choices. One for, one against, and one abstain, right? Um, and to send the same signal, right? When I am for a proposal on a referendum, 
right? I give it a positive vote. And how much I really love that proposal then forms you know, the intensity of the four vote. So all of you are actually only using your four vote if you did realize, right? And some of, and actually you are also using abstain, right? You abstain from it when you neither know whether there's a positive or negative outcome to a certain things, right? And for that reason, you give zero because I neither know it is good nor it is bad, right? In this case, if I were to partake in this, I would say like, I would kind of give negative vote to, you know, map of Atlantic Ocean because I think it really doesn't help um, that it goes up um, because it's, yeah, it has, a, you know, if it picks up a spot in the top few ranking, it's going to have negative effect on the group. So perhaps I would put a negative vote on this, right? Uh, so you do have the against vote as well. So in this case, for every single proposal, right, a proposal being like a candidate like that, a map of the Atlantic Ocean, you can exercise a for, against, or abstain vote, right? So when do you use it? When you're against it, right? When you don't want it. You know that there's a negative value in that, right? For the second question, so for uh, something like a presidential election, uh, where, you know, there are multiple candidates, how do you go about it? Uh, it's actually quite simple, you know, you just name, list, List it. So let's say we are going to have a presidential election in the upcoming 2020, you know, and you have all your candidates here, their names, right? And really you just vote on them, right? Whether I like this president or I don't like this president, uh, that's how you can go about this. Yeah? Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, in the first one, yes. But in the second one, I was, asked, I, I was referring to uh, run a survey in order to select the primary people that are gonna compete. Ah, okay, I get, yeah, I get it. So this is talking about election criteria. So election criteria is not part of the quadratic voting uh, system. So that one, you have to go back to your system and see what does your system recommend. So take for instance, Singapore's case, right? let's say uh, to go to be an eligible candidate, perhaps you need to put a deposit of $20,000 or perhaps there's a certain criteria that you have to meet that you have need to got a certain leadership role, a certain uh, people to back you up, uh, you know, a party to back you up, that kind of thing um, to be eligible, right? So take for instance, like in my company, uh, we have the promotion nomination. Uh, the eligibility criteria is simple, right? You got to be at least employed for one year and you, uh, and you won't say, yeah, and you are on a permanent contract. So these are the only two criteria to get you on the list. So um, it really goes back to the system and projecting voting does not actually address that. Okay. So I see a question from Edgar. Um, thank you for attending, right? Uh, Edgar wants to think if this is compatible to a hybrid voting, like an online offline where people can participate. Um, yes, right. Um, I think it's uh, it, I, I think it's compatible, but the problem is on um, execution. How do we execute such things on the offline mode? Because uh, on an offline vote, um, it is very hard for you to exercise such things. You know, um, it is very hard to validate that a certain vote conform to a certain budget. Right? Imagine this voting sheet, but um, in a paper format, it is very hard for you to calculate um, if the participant had not exceed the entire budget. So for that reason, actually, I wouldn't um, recommend like combining with an offline scenario, right? Um, but it is possible. I just highly don't recommend it. Yeah. Uh, thank so, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, uh, Graham, can people make accounts in your tool so that they can carry over votes? Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, uh, but the tool is open source. So, you know, if anyone would like- Not to, yet. <laughs> yeah, it is open source, right? Um, so the source are on this, this two URL. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, that is all. You know, if anyone has any more question, please uh, come. You know, just you, you may ping me directly. In fact, uh, you have my email here, 
right? So uh, if not, I think we have extended. Thank you very much for your active participation. Um, thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Raymond. I'm going to end the, end the thanks, session. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks, Tyler. All right. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you very day. much. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Very useful.